Some say it's colonialism. Are you doing, my baby? You're not a girl. But it moves indigenous people. Let's go. Christianity. I believe that God opened many different doors for me that wouldn't have been there otherwise. I think I'm going to wear my flower boots today. <laughs> if I didn't have people praying for me. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks, Travel. Talk to you later. Yeah, you bet. If I didn't have my ancestors, my forefathers praying for me. And if I didn't have, you know, um, the faith that I do. So it's been a constant uh, journey that I've been on. It provides connection. Praise and worship is a time that I personally use to get quiet inside. Even though I'm singing and worshiping, I'm, I'm, I'm getting quiet inside to connect to God. Community. The people will lay hands on you if you want, if you want them to, because we believe that a prayer um, when you lay hands on someone, the energy and the spirit of that prayer goes through them, the Holy, like the Holy Spirit, and, and goes up. And so it's all like connected. And it's personal. There's been times in the past when I've had shivers or feelings of warmth. Oh man, it feels peaceful. It feels hopeful. It feels awe-inspiring because he is this magnificent creator. I feel grateful and, and thankful and sometimes I even feel uneasy because I am this human with all these different faults and going in front of this, you know, God that is amazing and perfect and holy. It's our own thing that we have to come to terms with when we're building this relationship, you know, with God because we're all affected by our experiences on this earth and in a constant um, process of healing and um, discovering who, who he is. Many indigenous religions are centuries old. There's a lot of misunderstanding as to what native spirituality is on a lot of levels. There's a lot of fear behind that as too that comes with the misunderstanding and the ignorance. And sometimes scary. I would like to do a sweat in the future. I just really need to find a elder or spiritual leader that I know and trust um, to do that with because I've had some bad experience, some bad spiritual experiences in a sweat that freaked the heck out of me. I have. And sometimes vilified according to some views of scripture. One such fundamentalist view is the rejection of syncretism, the blending of religions. A reconciliation event in Moose Jaw was organized by the Indigenous Director of Briarcrest College. Briarcrest is an evangelical institution. Its statement of faith says they share the ideals of the Lausanne Covenant. Sweet grass, sage, cedar and tobacco were there and drums. Elder Noel Starblanket sees value in sharing ceremony. I have a Catholic priest who is uh, attending Sundance ceremonies, the highest ceremony of the Cree people in our communities. And uh, he's not just talking about it, he's attending the celebration, I mean the, uh, the ceremony and, and praying with us. Now that to me is reconciliation. 
Janine LeBlanc, researcher and PhD candidate at the University of Alberta Faculty of Native Studies, grew up with the Evangelical Church and remembers how indigeneity was sometimes rejected. Now, it's not every evangelical community, but some of these more conservative communities that would say you can't bring drums in, you can't bring smudge, you can't bring medicines, you can't assert this type of indigeneity, this type of um, indigenous identity in our ceremonies. But that was long before the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which says the churches should respect indigenous spirituality and prevent spiritual violence. And so we have to have tools, of course. Chief to Dr. Robert that. Joseph hosted a talking circle in Moose Jaw and told APTN how the churches need to respond to Call to Action 60. The church has to decolonize itself and recognize that long before they came to the shores of this great country of ours, that we had our own concepts and beliefs in a God creator. Uh, the supremacy of the divine and the interconnectedness of everything because the churches really don't fully understand that nor, they as nor do they espouse the absolute necessity for acknowledgement and recognition of interconnectedness. Perry Stelter lives in Stony Plain, Alberta. He's an author, public speaker, radio host, and a 60s scoop survivor. He's known by many as Pastor Perry. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day today. Let's go to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer before we continue in our series in the Gospel of John. The government is supposed to be reaching out to me with this whole approach to reconciliation and and helping me recover from this, but I'm in a dilemma. I'm also seen as a spiritual leader within my own community because I'm indigenous and I do the work of a pastor. He says Call to Action 60 is a big part of his work. And so it was really a call to action to myself as an indigenous person as well and so that was a hard struggle for me at first. I came to the conclusion that call number 60 has to be the mandate of what I do with Word of Hope Ministries because I need to be leading by example his path to this point in his life was not easy. So I didn't know about my, about who I was even growing up, but as I met my biological family out in Alexander First Nation and Enoch Cree Nation and other different communities, I started to come to grips with who I was as an Indigenous person. The family I grew up with went to a a church and we went regularly on Sundays and I was involved in the youth group. I do believe that it was a good thing for me because it kept me out of trouble, it kept me occupied, it kept me busy. But as I got into my teenage rebellious years, I just decided at that point in time that it wasn't enough for me, that I was more interested in partying and having fun with my friends. They wanted to judge and throw around I uh, became an alcoholic binge drinker for a number of years. I've been sober now completely for about 19 years. But as I was turning my life around and sobering up, I decided to investigate uh, my belief in God again. LeBlanc also left her family's church as a young adult. When I left the evangelical tradition, I thought, I'm never going back, I'm so bitter. And like, you know, it's just, no, it's nothing, it, there's nothing good. But I think now, as I, especially with the studies that I'm doing too now, drawing out some of those like complex ways that we are as human beings and then putting us in situations where these systems like religious and cultural institutions or traditions are kind of merging and having a conversation and colliding. I think um, I see those things a little bit differently. We kind of jump around because Dickinson is following this like, Dr. Paul Garreau is an assistant professor at the University of Alberta and a researcher of Métis Catholicism. That's the worst part of colonialism, is the breaking of relationships, right? So like 500 years of, of resistance means 500 years of resisting 
people who've broken their relationships. Either they'd be like alliances or relationships with with like with the spirit or with like with animals, you know what I mean? Like all these different relationships that were part of an indigenous epistemology and way of thinking get fragmented at all times. And then over with Canada, all of the management of indigenous bodies and indigenous people have to do with breaking those relationships. Joseph agrees. Reconciliation is fundamentally about relationships. And we've had a horrible legacy of broken relationship or non-existent relationship. And relationships need to be built and rebuilt. I've observed uh, how people love to talk. Uh, they'll talk, talk, talk about reconciliation. And uh, I constantly admonish them to, uh, uh, to remember the words of uh, uh, Mr. Justice Sinclair, now Senator Sinclair. Uh, the 94 recommendations are calls to action. They're not calls to talking. And so I tell people, uh, do something. Uh, pick one of those calls to action and do something about it. So this is this is my Cookham's Bible and um, scripture or words of the Bible are considered authoritative and infallible by many. And, um, yeah, it's, still smells like her and it was interesting looking back through this and finding little spots that she had underlined here and there. The Sentinel Group is a United States based missionary organization that in their own words, prepares needy communities for spiritual revival. Like Briarcrest College, they follow the same fundamentalist views. They measure accomplishment in the transformation of an entire community. Morn can see why this is celebrated. Since its release in June of 1999, the award-winning Transformations video has given more than... According to the Bible, Jesus and God and the Apostles like their mission was to evangelize the whole world. Um, it says that, you know, Christ came so that none would be lost. So um, I can see why they would be celebrating the conversion of a whole community because they're the people that are there um, as missionaries or w whatever capacity they're in, it's, it's they feel convicted or they feel that it's their mission and duty. As the stelter... Yes, you want to share what you believe in and you want other people to be excited about it like you're excited about it. Both see how it can be problematic with colonial history. They stole our culture and then banned our languages and shamed us and abused you know, our people <laughs> in the name of God. How can you not be concerned when people are coming in in the name of you know, God. Stelter feels the colonizers were either mistaken or misrepresenting God. They were just re representing their Western views on how life should be. They were representing what the church in Rome was saying, how life should be. Yeah, so, yeah. What comes to mind for many is the residential school system. Something Morin's grandmother experienced. The things that were done in the name of God via the residential school system to our people. It was just very, very difficult to, to comprehend how this could have been done in the name of God, that they used God, that they used this perverted version of God and Jesus to inflict these horrors upon my family line and, and upon you know, our people. Look, she has that outlined. The parting gift of peace. Evangelizing, or missionary work, was once part of the colonial toolbox. So is it new because it's in the 21st century? There's always this evangelical zeal of trying to missionize indigenous people, um, but then we never consider what's, you know, like what indigenous people are doing to engage and resist 
that, that colonialism, right? So for me, it's like it's not a neo-colonial thing. It's a continual, continued colonial thing. Joseph feels the church needs to step up. It might be challenging to accept all of the churches continuing to evangelize in our communities and still continue to take us away from our ancient worldviews that had their own definitions and ideas about uh, the deity, about the divine, about this place. So in some ways, um, for the older people who are already part of the church, I, I say I wish them luck. And in other ways, the churches have to embrace some of our indigenous belief systems that are equally as important. A lot of people have found that this building is a, a bit... It's also worth understanding that indigenous people were dealing with Christian missionaries before the residential school system started. It's not assimilation completely, right? So I find that really interesting and really important to remember. Especially because when I think about the Métis, it's like to think that the Métis are Catholics is to think of them as assimilated doesn't jive with, you know, 200, 300 years of Métis Catholics, right? Of how Métis have been Catholic for a long time and on their own terms. On the East Coast, evangelizing began 500 years ago. LeBlanc said it wasn't necessarily a state imposition, but a meeting of religious ideas and concepts. The Jesuits, I think, as an example, were really good at that too. They, they, they took a different tack than, and a different approach than other Christian missionaries. Maybe um, they saw those connection points as opportunities. And I think what I see is Mi'kmaq people. You know, historically, not everyone. You know, I don't want to fit into those binaries of like either or, good, bad. I think the complexities are really important in these stories and these narratives. Finding those connections seems to be an approach the Sentinel Group and their missionaries use. They were starting to get more animals than ever before. Fish in the lakes were starting to grow. Even the land is starting to produce little plants. We are so blessed. Suicide, that's completely gone on the downtrend. So whose worldview directs these connections? then, okay, so we become evangelical Christians, we, the curse is lifted, like in the Inuit in the north, the curse is lifted and then all these animals come and we're hunting better and we're fishing better and so, like settler people don't care about the land and fishing and hunting, right? It's a game, right? Whereas for the Inuit, that's, that's traditional engagement, that's traditional ways of relating, right? So I find that really particularly, uh, that those are like those moments of like, oh, that's important to recognize that they're still engaging in traditional frameworks or wor a worldview. So, when these religious movements come into communities and dominate, it may divide them, sometimes resulting in violence. When there's people being, you know, beaten up or, you know, ostracized or like shamed, those are all forms of violences that come from being that you are wrong, right? So then the people are trying to push them away to, to choose the right way. If that exclusivity starts to put a lot of pressure and violence in communities, that's when things split up and create a lot of problems in communities. Brandy right? thinks this isn't right. It's lateral violence. You know, why are, you know, I understand there's um, anger and hurt and um, but at the same time, um, we shouldn't be um, trying to enforce our beliefs onto other people the same way that the colonizers or the church did to us, and we shouldn't be judging them for, for that. So um, I, I, would, I would disagree. So it may not be colonization either. Just like the Métis and the Mi'kmaq, these communities could be engaging Christianity on their own terms, for their own reasons. There's another level there that needs to be understood, that there's this nuance that's going on, right? Sure, there's this, this push towards exclusivity, but what is it that they, they are not becoming white people, you know? These are still indigenous communities 
engaging and negotiating new tools and new visions and ideologies within their community. But often, if one leaves the larger community, one circle of friends can fall apart in a way that is reminiscent of new religious movements or a cult. The classic one is like new religious movements, right? When you try to leave, you lose everything because that's the center of your world, right? So um, when we talk about, again, about violence is that a violence is when uh, an evangelical, we'll say we're talking about evangelicals right now, a cu comes and takes, you know, takes hold of the entire community and then whoever doesn't fit in gets pushed out and then that just becomes community. If you start to shift against those powers, then really then you have nowhere to turn. For LeBlanc, it wasn't all bad. I really saw some of the values that I received from that evangelical upbringing as really awesome. Like there, there were some really amazing people that I met um, that became part of my family and are still much a part of my extended family. Joseph feels the churches do have a part in reconciliation. It's important for them to have a role because they were directly involved in the initiatives that are now termed genocide, that they were the instruments of government and other policymakers in trying to do away with us as distinct people, uh, that they wanted us to, to be created in their image. LeBlanc says her father, an evangelical, insists on cultural inclusion. My parents were so adamant that this has to be, and maybe it's a product of my dad being Mi'kmaq and Catholic, like this whole tradition. Like, we have to respect this. This has to be a part of who we are. Um, you know, our ceremonies, our medicines, our traditions have to be a part of this other, this, this encounter. And Brandy just feels a connection to the Creator is part of being Indigenous. Whether it's three generations with no direct, you know, Indigenous spirituality or reconnecting to that, um, I believe that we are still under the previous um, prayers of our ancestors. So. Next week on APTN Investigates. There is a wealth of scientific evidence uh, tying non-Hodgkin lymphoma and cancers and health problems overall to glyphosate herbicides. It affects my life, but that's how I am. Who we are, I should say.